years ago when I was first beginning to put together all the information for this course, I had an unexpected visit from a former student of mine and he just showed up out of the blue and he asked what I was doing. I said, well, putting together a course in Greek mythology. And he thought, ah, oh, that's great. I remember when you used to teach Greek mythology. It was so much fun. And he went on and on and on. And I said, well, what are you doing, George? He said, well, I'm working for one of the local papers here in town. And I said, well, what kind of things are you writing about? And he said, well, the crime scene, basically. And he lamented that he was now out of the university and had to work. And he particularly disliked having to cover all the grisly, gruesome crime scenes. And George was going on about how great it was way back when, when he just, as a student, had all the leisure in the world to study Greek mythology. So sublime, so beautiful, so peaceful. And we made good times even better each time we talked about it. And finally, he left and got back to doing my work. And I thought, well, poor George. He's out there in the real world. And here I get to study beautiful things in Greek mythology. And I started looking over the myths that I was going to be bringing up in class and started ca cataloging the beauty of Greek mythology. We'll be studying in this class homicide, patricide, matricide, fratricide, infanticide, gluttony, drunkenness, lust, incest, sodomy, adultery, fornication, rape, bestiality, necromancy, revenge, deceit, war, treason, betrayal, avarice, cowardice, cruelty, castration, mutilation, theft, cannibalism, and outright dishonesty. <laughs> so welcome to the beautiful world of Greek mythology. Before we begin a study of the Greek myth, we really should sit down and define what we mean by a myth. Our English word myth comes from the Greek word mythos, which simply is a thing spoken, a story. It could be a long story. It could be a statement, a command. The modern connotation that most European languages have when they use the word myth is that the thing that is said or spoken is false. When the ancient Greeks talked about their mythology, what they meant by that word was their religion and their history. When we use the word Greek mythology, what is meant now is the quaint stories of a false religion that was practiced in ancient Greece or perhaps the untrue aspects of their history. For instance, many a professor will give a student an assignment to separate what is fact from what is myth with regard to something like the Trojan War. The connotation is that mythology, the myth, is something which is not true. Well, both in ancient times and in modern times, there have been attempts at a more precise definition of the word myth other than something simply spoken. People have tried in the past and in present to find a common denominator for all myths. They have tried to find a universal explanation or theory that will tell us the origin of myth, the function of myth in our life, and how myth operates. And as I said, people in antiquity and in the present have been delving very deeply into the subject of the nature of myth. And as we'll see, that in ancient and modern times, much of the same thing is being rehashed. Many of the ancient theories have merely resurfaced in modern times under a different name.